Okay, so let's continue with the next technique, which is your trigonometric substitution. So the aim of this is also to eliminate the radical in the integrand. So I think this is the same as the objective of your first advanced technique, which is your algebraic substitution. But in this particular technique, so you just have to be guided with the format. So as you can see in the expressions in the integrand in the left column or in the first column, so this one. So you have to observe in the integrand that all of your formats given in your integrand is in the form of these terms. <coughs> Alright, so for example, if you have this particular term, square root of a squared minus u squared so take note that a is a constant so if you have this format so we have to utilize this trigonometric substitution u is equal to a sine theta all right so next is you have the square root of a squared plus u squared so we have to utilize u is equal to a tangent theta for your formula and then lastly is your u squared square root of u squared minus a squared and we have to use this trig sub u is equal to a second theta <coughs> so so aside from um, observing the terms in your integrand having these terms three here three terms so the original explanation for this one is if you go back to your um, inverse trig function so again if you try to list down the three different inverse trigonometric integrals so the first one is du all over the square root of a squared plus u squared so the next one is du all over a squared plus u squared and lastly your last inverse trig function is u times the square root of u squared minus a squared so <clears throat> so take note that the expressions here in the in the left column is more likely the same as the, the in the expressions of your inverse trigonometric functions now <clears throat> It really came from the inverse trig function but your advanced technique your trigonometric substitution is so you have to use this if the format in your inverse trig function cannot be achieved so for example you cannot achieve this format but since this particular term is present in the equation so we go to the advanced technique which is your trigonometric substitution so for example in the second line so you have the so if you cannot achieve your um, this format for your inverse tangent but since you have a squared plus u squared so notice also that you have a squared plus u squared here but it has in uh, a square root function but so that's why we go to the advanced technique for us to be able to solve the equation so same goes for the last term so if we cannot achieve this term so take note that we have this square root here the same as the given expression in the integral for the trigonometric substitution so also notice that the particular trig substitution on the right column so as you can see the integral for this one is arc sine and notice that we are utilizing sine here for your trigonometric substitution for the second formula for your inverse trig function so the particular integral for this one is arc tangent so notice also that we are utilizing tangent on the right side <coughs> and lastly this one is arc second and notice that the trigonometric value for the expression is also in second 
So not in inverse, but as you notice, there are the same, di ba? Sine, sine, tangent, tangent, second, second. So again, we have to use the advanced technique because we cannot achieve the format in the inverse trigonometric functions or aside from not achieving the format in your inverse trig function so these three three expressions are present in your integrand and again the goal is to eliminate the radical expression so let's try to discuss examples so we have to discuss six examples So let's start with the first one. So we have the integral of 1 over x squared times square root of 16 minus x squared with respect to x. So as you can see, so if again, if we're going to try to write the particular inverse format, inverse trigonometric integral, so du all over a squared minus u squared so as you notice what we can achieve in the given equation is only this part right but we have x squared in the denominator an extra term in the given format so meaning we cannot achieve your inverse trigonometric formulas right away so since we cannot achieve that one so we have to go to utilizing the advanced technique which is your trigonometric substitution so first is i'm going to write the process of your trigonometric substitution in blue and then in red is your integral process so starting off with the trigonometric sub process so observe first the radical expression for us to be able to determine the particular formula or trig sub we're going to use. So notice that this one is constant minus the variable. So that will be the square root of a squared minus u squared. So again, for this format, the formula is u is equal to a sine theta. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so next step is for us to determine the values for your u and your a because we'll be needing that one in your formula. So starting off with a first. So a squared is 16. <clears throat> and then next is a is equal to 4. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, so next is your u squared. So u squared is equal to x squared. And then getting the square root. So your u is your x. So since we have determined your values for a and u, so we can now use the formula. So using the formula right here, so we'll have x is equal to 4 sine theta. <coughs> so that will be the, I think that will be the first process. So we have to determine the values for your formula. I mean, the first one is to observe the format and then determine which trig sub you're going to utilize determine the values of a and u and then get the, <clears throat> the exact value for the formula <clears throat> so take note here that we won't be using u sub so since we have u here so we won't be deriving from u but we will be deriving from the trigonometric substitution from the formula so we'll be deriving from the formula so coming from x is equal to 4 sine theta, so deriving this one, so we have dx 
is equal to 4 cosine theta d theta. <coughs> So, sakto ba, ba, right? So, I think the derivative of cosine, I mean, the, uh, the derivative of sine is cosine. Right? So, notice that upon looking at the equation, so, you can replace dx with this term. So, let's try to make an arrow. So, we can replace dx with 4 cosine theta d theta. And we can replace your x squared, so x squared, or the x value because the squared will be followed in the substitution process. So the x value is x equals 4 sine theta. So what's left for us to replace or for us to substitute is your square root of 16 minus x squared. So how do we do that? So again, going back to our formula, so this one is our formula, then it transform into this part. So we have to isolate the particular trigonometric function that, that was being utilized in the formula. So let's say this one is sine, so sine theta is equal to x all over Four. So, what's the purpose of isolating your trigonometric function? So, let's identify first the definition of your sine function. So, that's so sine function is opposite side of the angle all over the hypotenuse. So, again, why do we need to isolate the trigonometric function? So, the purpose of this one is for us to create a right triangle. So let's create a right triangle here. Okay, so let's say this angle is our angle theta. So again, coming from the description, so I'm going to circle it here. So again, coming from the description, so the opposite side of the theta is x. The hypotenuse is the 4. Okay. So getting the unknown side, which is the base of the right triangle. So by Pythagorean theorem, that will be the hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. So that will be 4 squared minus x squared. So as you can see, it will be the same as the term above in the equation. So, square root of 16 minus x squared. So, the creation of the right triangle has a purpose because it will eliminate or it will create a particular substitution value for the remaining term above in the equation. So after creating the right triangle and then determining the different parts, so what's next is for us to pair the constant term. So pair the constant term and pair the radical term. So how do we pair them up? Is We have to use a particular trigonometric function for the pair up. So looking at the angle theta, so, what particular trigo function you're going to utilize for this pair up with respect to the angle theta? So, as you can see, that will be the adjacent side of the angle, the square root of 16 minus x squared, all over the hypotenuse. So, we have to use cosine. Cosine theta is equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared, so that's the adjacent side, all over 4. So isolating your, your radical expression, so this, this becomes 4 cosine theta 
is equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared. So as you notice, we can now replace your square root of 16 minus x squared with 4 cosine theta. So as you observe as well, so all terms will be in the trigonometric functions. So for example, your dx is in terms of cosine theta. Diba? Your x is in sine theta. Your square root of 16 minus x squared is in cosine theta. So all the substitution process will lead you to um, replacing your variables with um, trig functions. So sine theta, cosine theta, cosecant theta, depending on the values that you have generated. Right, so I think this is the whole process of the trigonometric substitution part. So the next part is for you to integrate. So let's go back to the red. Okay, so, so replacing the different values, so starting off with dx, so this is 4 cosine theta, d theta. So again, this is dx, right? dx first. So for you of those who are confused where this came from, so it came from here. So divided by x squared. So the value of x is this one. So that will be 4 sine theta squared. Okay? Then lastly is your square root of 16 minus x squared. So the other term will be 4 cosine theta. So notice that we can cancel out 4 cosine theta. And this simplifies into so I'm going to write it on the right side lang sa first for the simplification process. So d theta all over, so applying the square function, so that will be 16 sine squared theta. So getting the constant outside the equation, so this becomes 1 over 16. The integral of d theta all over sine squared theta. So 1 over sine can be expressed in another way. So this is 1 over 16 times the integral of cosecant squared theta d theta. So as you can remember, we have a formula for your integral for cosecant squared and that is negative cotangent. So 1 over 16 times negative cotangent theta plus c. So since this is coming from the substitution process, so we still have theta in we still have theta in the equation. So how do we replace it back in the original um, condition na in terms of x ang inyong final answer. So, so how do we do that? So again, as you notice, since we have created a right triangle earlier, so we have to utilize this triangle and we have to determine cotangent term. So cotangent theta, so as per definition of cotangent, that is the adjacent side of the angle all over the opposite side. So this will be square root of 16 minus x squared all over the opposite side which is x. So again the definition of your cotangent function is adjacent side all over the opposite side. Okay so this becomes 1 all over 16 times negative square root of 16 minus x squared all over x plus 
C. So the final answer for this one is one o oh, I mean sorry. So the final so the final answer for this one is negative square root of sixteen minus x squared all over sixteen x plus c. So this is your uh, final answer. Okay, so questions so far? Or do you have questions? <coughs> okay, so no. Okay, so no questions. So I think you have clearly understood the process for this technique. Okay, so let's try solving another problem. So this time is we have the square, uh, the integral of one over x times the square root of nine plus x squared. So again, as you can see, we cannot achieve the inverse uh, trigonometric integrals so getting right away with the technique so starting off with the blue one the trig sub <coughs> so as ob um, so observing your radical expression determining the format so that will be a squared plus u squared So the formula for this one is, or the specific trig sub for this one is u equals a tangent theta. Okay, so next is we determine the values for your a and u parameters. So a squared is 9, a is a is 3, then u squared is equal to x squared, and then u is equal to x. Okay, so since we have the values for your a and u terms, so we can now use the formula. So that will be x is equal to 3 tangent. theta so again we need to so next step is derive so this is dx so derivative of tangent is 3 second squared theta d theta okay so isolating your tangent function for us to determine the right triangle we need to create so tangent theta is equal to x all over 3. <coughs> okay, so creating the, the right triangle. Okay, again, so let's say this one is our angle theta. So again, you can have theta in on the, op the opposite side. So it will depend on how you create your right triangle. So Peter put any. So you can still create your right triangle in this format. And this one is your theta. As long as you follow the definition of your uh, trig function being presented. So the final answer is still the same. So for example, you're going to use it this way. And your theta is in this manner or your right triangle is the same as what I have presented but your angle theta is right here or you want your triangle to be inverted so that's fine and let's say this one is your angle theta or let's say your angle theta is this one so it won't matter as long as you have determined the right 
um, placement of your values. Okay, so tangent theta is opposite all over adjacent side. So that will be opposite side of angle theta. That will be x. And then the adjacent side of theta is 3. So again, by Pythagorean theorem, so the hypotenuse is the sum of the square of the two sides. So that will be 9 plus x squared. So notice that this term right here is the same as the term in the equation given above. So next step is for us to pair the radical expression from the right triangle with the constant. And then determine the specific um, triangle function we're going to use. So upon observation, so it's easy to say that we're going to use cosine theta. So that will be 3 all over the square root of 9 plus x squared. So isolating your square root function, so this becomes the square root of 9 plus x squared is equal to 3 all over cosine theta. So 1 over cosine theta, so this becomes 3 second theta. So again, if we try to observe the equation given above, so dx can be replaced by 3 second square theta. Your x parameter can be replaced by 3 tangent theta. And your square root of 9 plus x squared can be replaced by 3 second theta. So again, notice that all terms are in trigonometric functions. So tangent theta, second square theta, second theta. Okay, so what's next is we go to the integration process right now. So dx is, again, that will be 3 second squared theta d theta all over the x parameter, which is 3 tangent theta. And then the last term, which is the square root of 9 plus x squared, is 3 second theta. So we can cancel out 3. We can cancel out 1 second. So what remains in the equation is the integral of second theta, d theta, all over 3 tangent theta. Okay, so getting rid of the constant, so this becomes one-third, the integral of second theta, d theta, all over tangent theta. So as you can see, we can simplify this further. So how do we simplify this further, or how do we try to simplify this one? So if you try to break down your... Uh, functions even further into its basic form. So second theta is 1 all over cosine theta. Then tangent theta is sine theta all over cosine theta. So d theta in the numerator. So as you can see, we are dividing fractions. So if we try to use the basic concept of of division dividing fractions so this will be 1 over cosine theta divided by cosine sine theta all over cosine theta so get the reciprocal of the second term and then multiply so this becomes 1 over cosine theta times cosine theta all over sine theta so this is, so this one is the basic um, procedure for dividing fractions. So we can eliminate
cosine theta. So if you're so if you have mastered division of fractions, so you can say that we can cancel this one out immediately. So for those of you who don't know the shortcut, so this is the step by step procedure in eliminating the other term. So the simplified version is one third integral of d theta all over sine theta. So this translates into one third integral of cosecant theta d theta. So I think we have a formula for your integral of cosecant theta. So for those of you who forgot, so the answer for this one is one third so times ln of cosecant theta minus cotangent theta plus c. So that's the integral of cosecant theta. So notice that we still have to bring back the value of your cosecant theta and your cotangent theta. So going back again from this right triangle on the left side in the blue one. So starting off with cosecant theta. So as per definition, that's the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse all over the opposite side. So hypotenuse all over the opposite side. <coughs> So cotangent, so cotangent theta is adjacent side all over the hypotenuse. So opposite side is 3, I mean adjacent side is 3, then opposite side is x. So for cotangent again, the definition is adjacent all over the opposite side. So notice that our final answer is 1 third. So ln of the square root of 9 minus x squared all over x minus 3 all over x plus c. So notice that we can combine the two terms since they have the same base. So we can just try to erase this one for since there's, there's no more space already. Okay, so, so we can combine them in one term. So square root of 9 minus x squared minus 3 all over x. So this is your final answer. <coughs> Oops. Oops. It's a... So, okay, ang na. Okay, so do you have questions for this example? <coughs> okay, so no questions. Okay, so let's proceed with the next example. Okay, so this time is we have the integral of square root of x squared minus 25 over x with respect to x. So again, notice that it's impossible for us to utilize the inverse trigonometric format. So what we need to do here is again, so magbalik balik ra. So, hmm? Ah, wala. Ah, okay, it's up. Stop this today. 
Tengo ganas, quita enano. Okay, so again, going back to example number three. So as you can see in the given equation, so it's impossible for us to use the use the inverse trig format. Okay, so again, going back to the trig sub. So again, observing. So again, the process is repeating. So it's procedural. So it's the same for all um, process for your trig sub. So observing again the radical expression and identifying the format. So that will be u squared because it's variable first minus a squared. So again, the formula for this one is u is equal to a second theta. <clears throat> okay, so so question is, for example, the given radical expression is of different different format. So let's say it doesn't achieve the format being presented in the slide earlier. Katong mga square root of a squared minus u squared, square root of a squared plus u squared, and then u squared minus a squared. So for example, the given equation is not being um, the given radical expression cannot be represented by those equations. So that's why you have the first technique last meeting. So for example, you don't have the format, so you can still utilize the algebraic sub technique. So for example, you have the format, so you go to trigonometric sub technique. So vice versa. So trig sub is more likely algebraic sub, but for trigonometric substitution, so there's a format for the radical expression. So in the in the algebraic substitution, so the format for a radical expression could be any format. So it could be any form as long as it's a radical expression. But for trigonometric substitution, so you have to follow the three formats for us to be able to utilize the technique. Okay, so moving on. So determining the values so u squared is x squared and then u is equal to x so a squared is equal to 25 and then a is equal to 5 so the formula becomes x is equal to 5 second theta so again, deriving this one, dx is 5. So derivative of second is sectan, second theta, tangent theta, d theta. So again, as you can see, we can replace x with 5 second theta. We can replace dx with five second theta tangent theta d theta so what's left for us to replace or substitute is your square root of x squared minus 25 and that's coming from the right triangle that we need to create so again from the formula isolating the trigonometric function that second theta is equal to x all over five Okay, so second theta is equal to x over 5, so creating the right triangle. So let's say this one is our angle theta. So by definition, second is hypotenuse all over the adjacent side. So hypotenuse is 5, I mean x adjacent side of the angle is 5. So again, by Pythagorean theorem, this is x squared, the square of the hypotenuse minus the square of one leg is the other leg, minus 25.
Okay, so next is we pair this one again, pairing the radical expression with the constant, and then identifying the particular trigonometric function for the pair up. So looking at the, the pair, so against the angle theta, so that will be opposite all over adjacent side. So we can use the tangent function for this one. Tangent theta, so opposite side is the square root of x squared minus 25 all over 5. And then isolating or uh, multiplying 5 to the other side. So this one is 5 tangent theta is equal to the square root of x squared minus 25. So we can replace this one with 5 tangent theta. Okay, so going to the integration technique, so we have, so starting off with the numerator, so this becomes 5 tangent theta. So coming from your square root of x squared plus or minus 25, I mean. So all over x. So that will be 5 second theta. And then lastly, so again, this is what this one is the term here. This one is the term here. Then lastly is your dx. dx is this one. So that's 5 second theta tangent theta d theta. So canceling out a 5 second theta, 5 second theta. So this becomes the integral of 5 tangent squared theta d theta. So 5 integral of tangent squared theta d theta. So how do you integrate this one? So if you try to recall the discussion before, so going back to transformation by trigonometric functions, so this one is type B. So if you don't recall, so factor out something and then replace the tangent squared with second squared minus 1. So this one is second squared theta minus 1 d theta. So again, for those of you who forgot the formula from Pythagorean identity, this one is 1 plus tangent theta is equal to second squared theta. So through manipulation, so we can replace tangent squared theta with second square theta minus 1. So looking at the new term, so I think we can integrate the two terms immediately because we have a formula for the integral of second squared and the other term is an easy integral. So 5, so the integral of second square theta is tangent theta. So I think that's the reverse part of the derivative. So derivative of tangent is second squared, so going back to tangent by integrating, so second squared is tangent. So the integral of negative 1 is that to be negative theta, so negative 5 theta plus c. So notice that we have to replace tangent theta and theta as well. So tangent theta, again, going back to the triangle, so tangent theta is opposite all over the adjacent side. So that will be square root of x squared minus 25 all over 5. Okay. And then for theta, is we're going to utilize the formula. So again, this one is the formula. Then we translated it into this format. And then after this one is we isolated 
isolated second theta, di ba? So, utilizing this formula, so let's write this one here, second theta is equal to x all over 5. So, getting the theta, so actually what we normally do in our calculator in determining the angle is we get the inverse of the trigo function. So, this becomes theta is equal to arc second x all over 5. So that's what happens in the angle theta. So this becomes 5 times the square root of x squared minus 25 all over 5 plus 5 arc second x over 5 plus c. So, cancel out 5. So, we cannot cancel the 5 in the second term and the 5 in the, in the denominator for your arc second because this one here, x over 5, is the angle of the arc second. Okay, so I think you can only cancel if you are multiplying the same functions. So, let's say algebra against algebra and then trigo against trigo. So, this one is algebra against a trigo. Okay, so you cannot cancel out 5. So the final answer is square root of x squared minus 25 plus, uh, so instead of plus, this is minus, so sorry for that one. So 5 arc second x over 5 plus c. So this is the final answer. Okay, so do you have questions? Okay, so no questions. So let's proceed with the next one. So na magbalik pal kita ani og diska. So again, the the process is repeating. So let's try to discuss more examples for you to able to absorb the technique. So again, observing the radical expression and identifying the format. So this one is u squared minus a squared. So the formula is u is equal to a second. Ah, save ko. So that's plus. So this one is plus. So since it's plus, so that's a tangent theta. So take note that this one is the same as your u squared, I mean your a squared plus u squared because it's commutative property of addition. Okay, so determining your u squared first, that will be 4x squared. Then your u is equal to 2x a squared is equal to 9, and then a is equal to 3. So by formula, this becomes 2x is equal to 3 tangent theta. So getting the derivative, so this becomes 2dx is equal to 3 second squared theta. So since the given dx above is only in terms of dx, not 2 dx, so we have to divide everything by 2. 
So this becomes dx is equal to 3 halves second squared theta d theta. Okay. So again, notice that dx is this term here. X is, so how do you replace X? So we still have to isolate this one by dividing by 2. So this becomes X is equal to 3 halves tangent theta. So this term here is the X parameter. So again, we need to isolate uh, the formula. So let's try to write it on the bottom side. Or the relance above. So coming from this formula here, so this becomes tangent theta is equal to 2x all over 3. So opposite side over the adjacent side. So 2x all over 3. So that's the square root of 4x squared plus 9. Okay, so again, pair the constant and the radical expression. So the term that we can represent with this pair up is cosine. So cosine theta is equal to 3 all over the square root of 4x squared plus 9. So isolating the radical expression, we have 4x squared plus 9 is equal to 3 all over cosine theta. So 3 over cosine theta is also 3 second theta. So this term right here is 4x squared plus 9. Okay, so starting off with dx, so dx is this term here. So 3 halves second squared theta, d theta, all over the x parameter. So x parameter is this one. So 3 halves tangent theta. Then lastly is your square root function. So square root of 4x squared plus 9 is 3 secant theta. So cancel out 3 halves, cancel out 3 halves, cancel out 1 second in the numerator, cancel out second in the denominator. So this becomes second theta d theta all over 3 tangent theta. So this is one third second theta over tangent theta d theta. So again, we can further simplify this one. So 1 over cosine theta all over sine theta. So I think this one is the same as the as the example earlier. So cancel out cosine theta. So it simplifies into the integral of d theta all over sine theta, which is again in another term or another format that's cosecant theta d theta. So the almost answer for this one is cosecant theta minus cotangent theta plus C. So again, going back to the right triangle. So we have co I mean cosecant first, I mean. That will be hypotenuse all over the adjacent 
the side. I mean, opposite side, I mean. And then cotangent theta is adjacent side over the opposite side. So again, since we can combine the two terms, so I mean, so let's try to show along. over 2x minus 3 all over 2x plus c. Okay, so the final answer is square root of 4x squared plus 9 minus 3 all over 2x plus c. So this is the final answer. All right, so questions? Okay, so no? So I think it's an easy technique because it's so procedural. So you can be guided with the procedure. So I think the only problem that you will be encountering here is the integral, the trigonometric integrals. Okay, so let's go to the fifth example. So again, again, and again, so observe the radical expression. So this one is u squared minus a squared. Then the formula for this one is u is equal to a second theta. So u squared is x squared. Oh, sorry. u is equal to x and then a squared is 4 and then a is 2. So by formula we have x equals 2 second theta. So getting the derivative dx is equal to 2 second theta tangent theta d theta so x here is 2 second theta dx is 2 second theta d theta so again to determine the remaining substitution for the radical expression so we need to isolate the formula second theta is equal to x over 2 so again, by definition, this is hypotenuse all over the adjacent side. Okay, so hypotenuse is x, adjacent side is 2. So by Pythagorean theorem, this is x squared minus 4. So next step is to pair the radical expression and the constant term. So looking at the pair, so we can represent it as tangent function. Tangent theta is equal to the square root of x squared minus 4 all over 2. And this becomes 2 tangent theta equals the square root of x squared minus 4. And this term right here is this one. So you might be wondering why we always pair, pair it up with the constant value. So again, if we try to pair this one up with, if we try to pair the radical expression with the variable, so let's say we can have as we can have the sine function for that one. Sine theta is equal to x squared minus 4 all over x, diba right? So what we have is x sine theta is equal to x squared minus 4. 
So notice that we have an x parameter paired up with the trigonometric function. Now again, our aim is to replace every variable. That's why we have the substitution process. Diba? So all our, all our x and dx will be translated into a corresponding trigonometric function. So if you can see here, if you're going to pair that one up with the variable, so you cannot eliminate totally the value of x. So that's the purpose. So you can try that one once you try answering this one again. And if you want to explore, let's say pairing it, it pairing it up with the variable. So you can see for yourself that so it's complicated. It will make the equation more complicated. Okay, so dx is 2 second theta tangent theta d theta so divided by so x squared so that will be 2 so I mean so dx is this one then x parameter is 2 second theta so 2 second theta squared and lastly is your square root of x squared minus 4 is 2 tangent theta 2 tangent theta so cancelling out 2 cancelling out 2 cancelling out tangent cancelling out 1 second in the denominator so what remains in the equation is d theta so applying the square root the, the square to 2 so 4 then since we have, since we have cancelled out 1 second so that's a second theta so 1 over second theta is cosine diba? 1 divided by 1 over cosine that's cosine theta d theta so since this one is super basic so sine theta plus c so again going back to the right triangle sine theta is equal to opposite side x squared minus 4 all over the hypotenuse so we have 1 fourth times square root of x squared minus 4 all over x plus c so the final answer is the square root of x squared minus 4 all over 4x plus C. Okay. So questions? Okay, so no questions. So let's proceed with the last example. <clears throat> so for example you have to encounter this particular example so that's 1 over x squared plus 1 to the power of 3 halves so what you want to do here is try to simplify first the equation so I think you can still simplify this one So this becomes dx. So in terms of radical expression, this is the square root of x squared plus 1 cubed, right? So we can get one square outside the radical expression. So this becomes dx all over x squared plus 1 times the square root of x squared plus 1. So I think we can now work with our trigonometric substitution.
or you can always utilize it the way it is but sige lang, we'll try to compare it with the other um, technique or the other solution so u squared so the format is u squared plus a squared so this gives us the formula of u is equal to a tangent theta okay so u squared is x squared u is equal to x then a is equal to 1 a squared I mean then a is equal to 1 so the formula is x equals 1 tangent theta so derivative of tangent is second square theta d theta okay so dx can be represented by this one x can also be represented x squared by this one so the remaining term to be replaced is x squared plus 1 square root of x squared plus 1 so again from the formula this one is tangent theta is equal to x over 1 and by right triangle so opposite side over adjacent side so and this one is the hypotenuse so pairing the radical expression and the constant term that is cosine function cosine theta is equal to 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1 so this becomes square root of x squared plus 1 is equal to 1 over cosine theta and this becomes second theta so let's try to divide lang. All right. So I think this one, this term here is this one. So replacing the term. So starting off with dx. That's second squared theta. D theta divided by x squared plus 1 so that will be so since our again this one is dx since our x is tangent and this one is squared so this becomes tangent squared theta plus 1 then the square root of x squared plus 1 is this one is this term here so this is a second theta okay so if we try to recall this one this term here is a Pythagorean identity so this becomes a second squared theta d theta and then second squared theta second square second theta Wa? So cancel out, cancel out. So this becomes d theta all over second theta. And this becomes cosine theta d theta. So integrating is we have, sorry. So integrating cosine theta, since this one is a basic formula. So this becomes sine theta plus c. So again, coming from the right triangle, the sine function is x all over the square root of x squared plus 1 plus c. So since we don't want any radical expression in the denominator, so we have to use rationalization. So the final answer is x times the square root of x squared plus 1 all over the square root I mean so sorry the square root but it's 
just x squared plus 1. So x squared plus 1 plus c. So this is the final answer. So this one is the long method because if you want to really achieve the square root format, this one, because you want to achieve this term here, the square root of x squared plus 1. So this one is one, one solution. This one is a long method because you are going through the basic process. Okay, so what if we don't want to go through the process, the whole process? So let's try to solve it again. So let's say right here. So let's try to write the equation again. So that's the integral of dx all over the square root of x squared plus 1 to the power of 3, diba? Okay, so I think you can still utilize this in this format because you know that this one right here is a square root function. Again, so in another term, so this becomes dx all over the square root of x squared plus 1 cubed, right? So what we do here is we don't extract the, the square here, but we let it as is so we can continue with the easier solution. So again, since we know that um, the formula, so again, coming from the previous slide, our x is equal to tangent theta. Our dx is equal to um, dx is equal to second squared theta, right? So in our triangle, the square root of x squared plus 1 is equal to second theta. So notice that if you try to replace everything, so the equation simply becomes second squared theta. Then again, since this one, this term right here is the second theta, so second theta cubed. Diba? So, still, so this one is a simplified version. Okay. So, x over square root of x squared plus 1 plus c, and then the final answer is the same as one in the previous slide. Alright, so do you have questions or clarifications? So for example this one here. Mm. Rationalization as yeah. Rationalization. Na, so ana x square root of x squared plus one. Na multiply ana kado para eliminate the radical expression sa denominator. So that you can eliminate the radical expression in the denominator. So x times square root of x squared plus one. Then since this one is a perfect square already. So what remains is x squared plus 1. Okay. Okay, so any further questions? Okay, so if there's no more questions, so see you again on Friday for our next topic, which is integration by parts.